Card Making Friends, welcome back. I have some new stuff to play with today. First, I want to introduce you to my new white glass map from Glassboard Studios. I can see all the colors and ink and paint now. It's easy to clean up and it's magnetic. It has a grid for easy alignment. It's made out of a quarter inch thick tempered glass and it has a lifetime warranty and doesn't stain. If you are interested in one of these, click the link below and go on over to their website and use my coupon. It's Sandy with an I 20 and you'll get 20% off on your order. Okay, next new thing. We are going to be playing with some Lindy's Magicals. I'm just opening these little containers and they are full of powdered dye-based pigments and they stain rather than just float with a medium and you're going to see when I activate it with water. These things are so cool and they come in so many pretty colors. I'm going to be using this spritzer and it is a hairdressing spritzer. I got it on Amazon and it has a really, really fine mist and I'm playing with watercolor paper and I have paper towel underneath and I also have a pair of tweezers so that I can push down the center. So I'm using this tiny little fan brush and picking up just a really small amount of this pigment. It is really, really concentrated, so a little bit goes a really long way. And then when you spritz it, it activates all of the little cells, and that gets going too. So um, play with a little bit before you start adding more, because you'll see that you really don't need very much. And then, because this is wet, you can pick it up and move it around and get all those pretty colors flowing. Aren't they beautiful? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to add a little bit of green to it now. And again, I have to push this down because I have a dome going here. <laughs> you know what watercolor paper is like. As soon as it gets wet, it does all kinds of weird things. Okay, so I'm trying to fill in a few of my white spots with some of this green. And again, I'm going to spritz it to activate it. And so the green's got a couple other colors in it. It's got a little bit of blue, a little bit of yellow. And many of these pigments are like that. They do have uh, nice colors, other colors that uh, go in with them. They're not just the blue or just the green or just the purple. Okay, so I have most of my paper covered and I just want to move that around a little bit get a little bit more of it going and you get these big puddles off the end you want to get those to drop onto the mat underneath because they leave a real blotchy mark on your background if you have them sitting okay now we're going to add a little bit of purple I want these two colors together I love these two colors together one of my favorites has been for a really long time. So the purple has a little bit of blue in it as well. And again, I'm trying to flatten out that paper. Um, I would suggest, and I think I will do it next time, taping these down to a hardcore mat. Uh, if you're going to play with them, I certainly will next time. <laughs> okay, so isn't that purple beautiful? Oh man, just love it. I think I need to do an all purple one. I'm thinking about a purple butterfly for this one. And so that's why I kind of wanted to incorporate these colors. Okay, so I'm going to move this out of the way and let it dry. And see, I have some leftover splatter and I can actually see it on my new whiteboard. So super easy cleanup because you can see where it is. I love it. I love my Tim Holtz flat mat. Don't get me wrong. It's awesome. But I wanted the white so that I could actually see where the paint was. And here's the uh, stamp sets we're going to be playing with today. And I'm getting another piece of watercolor paper out. I think these are about uh, six by eight. I took two sheets and cut them in half. So again, I'm going to spritz some more, getting that paper all wet. And try and not spritz onto your pigments you don't want any water inside those little containers. So this one's going to be a predominantly purple one because I'm going to be cutting uh, probably my butterfly out of it. So um, I'm adding a lot more purple this time and then I'm going to fill in some with the blue because I want my butterfly to be a mixture of the two colors. So again, just kind of fooling around, moving the paint around, getting it. Oh, look at that nice wave. Woo this stuff's so fun to play with. <laughs> Can you tell I'm excited? <laughs> okay, so adding some more pigment. Spritzing again. 
And basically what I'm doing is filling in these white spots and they may be white because I didn't get them wet enough or they may be because I didn't get enough pigment on them. Uh, either one of those issues will cause white spots. Um, so just get in there and play move this around and the thing is is if you don't like it you can just spritz it until it's really watery turn it over and rub it on the paper towel that's underneath and it will remove almost all of the color for you and then you can start again I mean you'll have some staining but if you're using the same colors you can just go over it again I, I did do that once when I was playing with these when they first got here so these are really cool and uh Lindy's Gang is the name of their website, and they are out of Seattle. So I'm on to my third one now. We've got a little bit of green going on and a little bit of blue, and I'm going to spritz this again. And we're going to bring in these colors. I wanted a nice light one. See, there's a little bit of blue and a little bit of yellow in there. Really pretty colors for the greens. These two colors that I'm using are Lucky Shamrock Green and Shabby Turbine Teal. And they're a very pretty color combination. I really had fun with this one. I did another video too when I first got them. Um, I'm, I'm just finishing a couple of cards off and then I will finish the other video where I played with a bunch of the different colors that I had just received. And I'm just in the process of making a few cards with them just so that I can show you the technique and then I can show you what you can do with them when they're done. So stay tuned for another video coming soon. Okay, this time we're going to do some brown. This is Steampunk Sepia Cattail Copper Brown and Steel Shimmer. And I do put all three of them on there. Um, I end up not putting very much steel shimmer on there because it's quite gray and I ended up not liking it for this particular one. Uh, and this is the one where the background ends up being the dragonfly. And I knew I was going to do the dragonfly in copper. And so that's why I moved away from the steel shimmer because it was quite gray. Uh, meanwhile, the other colors blend really, really well together. And this ends up being a crazy pretty background by the time I'm finished with it. So again, I'm adding some more steampunk sepia. That's what's on the left-hand side. The cattail copper brown is the one in the center. And that's the steel shimmer. And then I'm coming back in with more copper brown. Trying to get more of that coppery color in there. And you see the steel shimmer gets quite gray. So it's nice to have a little bit because it adds a little bit of depth and shadow to your background. Uh, but I was really trying to get that copper in there. So, and as you can see, I'm just playing with this, just kind of moving it around, getting some color added. And there's a little bit of yellow and a little bit of red in some of these pigments, as you can see. And I do end up leaving a couple of them and it makes a really cool spot in the background. I actually put the dragonfly in a place that I didn't really want it because I didn't want to cover up where that spot was when this is all finished and dried. And they do dry a little bit lighter. They're like watercolors. They dry a little bit lighter, but not too much. Okay, I already spritzed this one. This is Canna Lily Burnt Orange, Cocktail, Cattail Copper Brown, and Time Travel Teal. And this is by far my favorite of the ones that I played with today. Look at that background. I cannot wait to play with it. And as you can see, I have my beautiful white glass mat all dirty. I just spritz it a little bit and give it a nice wipe with a paper towel. And it picks all of that up and it's beautiful, clean and sparkling white again. I just love this thing. Okay, so here's some of the backgrounds that I've made so far. I just want to quickly show them to you. And a good idea is to put stickers on the back. Uh, I put the stickers down beside them while they're drying and then move them to the back because obviously I'm not going to use all of these backgrounds at the same time. But that way down the road when I want to use them, I know what I used. Or if I want to recreate them, I know which of the pigments I used. Love that one. Isn't that pretty? Ooh, we're not going to play with that one today though. And there's one that's got a little bit of brown mixed in with a teal, like that one too. So I'm going to use my Misty, and I have another new thing in here. They're sticky mat from My Sweet Petunia. This thing rocks. Okay, so it even holds down watercolor paper that's been wet, which is what I just stuck in there. That was the one that I did first at the beginning of the video, and I'm going to be making my background out of it. 
once I finish fussing around with all the other pieces. So I'm securing it in place and I'm going to use some of the background stamps from this stamp set. And this is from Visible Image and it's called Butterfly Effect. And I do have it linked uh, underneath the video and there's also a link over to my blog. I've got it all listed there too. I'm using Versifying Claire and this is their black. And this is my favorite black. It really, really, really darkens things up. Even still with watercolor paper, you do need to stamp it a couple of times. So you see that I think I end up stamping this three times, uh, getting a nice dark image. It's also watercolor, it's waterproof, because I'm going to be adding some moisture to it in a little bit. It's not Copic friendly though. So I finished that one, and now I'm using the back of the stamped image to see if the other one from the set will fit in there, and it does. So I'm going to put it up on the left-hand side, and it's going to come down from the top down to the bottom. And again, I am using the same ink, and you've got to use your Misty for this because it holds everything in place for you. And don't you just love that that great big fat piece of watercolor paper has not moved? That little sticky sheet in there is something that you need. <laughs> I've also used it for regular cardstock for when I'm doing my regular cards that I don't have watercolor backgrounds and it just works really, really well. Highly recommend it. Okay, so I am fooling around with sentiments now, auditioning them right from the stamp sheet and I'm going to add one there. What else am I gonna add? This stamp set has a lot of really cool stamps. I think I will be using this again. Okay, so I'm putting another sentiment up there in the top right-hand corner, and I'm going to stamp both of those at the same time. Again, using the same ink. Doo -doo -doo. There we go. Next up, we're gonna take that sheet that I made that is predominantly purple, and I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to cut my butterfly out of. And peeling off that piece, see how easily it peels off? I'm placing this one down and I'm going to turn this because I'm going to go right about here. I want part of that blue on one of the wings of my butterfly and I'm going to be angling it. So I think it's gonna look kind of cool. Again, using my black ink. And again, I end up stamping this three times to make sure that I have a really nice dark black butterfly. And then I'm going to fussy cut it out because I didn't get any dyes with this one. So just a heads up on that. Anytime that I have a dark outlined image that I have die cut that I'm going to be adding to the top of my card, I like to take my black Tombow marker and just go around and color the edges. That way you get a nice finished look and you don't have these big white edges hanging out right over top of that pretty background that you just created. It really just finishes your card off. And there I'm using one of my cool magnets to hold everything in place. Okay, now we're going to do a little bit of painting with these Lindy's Magicals. I'm just loving these powders. I saved all of my little pieces from my background and I'm using my uh, fan brush to add a little bit of the pigment to my glass mat. And then I'm using my pipette to add a little bit of water and I'm testing it out on my background. And like I said, these are concentrated. So in this case, I need to add a whole bunch of water to this purple to get it light enough to color. So it's light enough now, and I'm going to go in and I'm going to paint one of the circles on my background. And this is the same purple that I used on my butterfly when I was building that background. And so I know that they're going to match, which is very cool. And isn't this cool that you can paint with this as well? Love it. Okay, so one of those greens is coming out next, and I'm going to add a little bit of that to my glass mat and a little bit more water. So that's a bluey green. You see how the pigments are just getting going there? And again, practice. Make sure that it's not too dark before you start adding it to your background. Uh, light is easy to add. Dark is hard to remove. So I'm going to do a couple of the little butterflies up the top just to add a little bit. I like to call it background noise. There's a little something going on in the background behind your main component of your card or your main art piece that I like to call that as well. So just coloring in some of the dots, some of the butterflies. Most of that section over there is going to be covered by the wing of my butterfly. So you'll see that I do leave a spot that I don't bother coloring in. And uh, next I'm going to open up the green and I'm going to add a little bit of that to it as well. 
right after I do this great big blue one over here. So it adds a little bit of contrast to the back of the card as well, and a little bit of color, and it makes you want to look and see what's going on back there. Okay, next up I'm going to add a little bit of green, and this is the Rusty Lantern Lime that I'm just putting a dot onto my glass mat a little bit of water and I just have a couple spots that I want to color with the green. I really like green, teal and purple together. Uh, I think it's a, a nice little contrast and this is nice and light so it's going to go perfectly with just a couple of the little dots that I'm covering in the background. And there we go. Okay everything's better with splatter right and we don't want to waste all that beautiful pigment we have sitting on the glass mat. So got my splatter box out and I am adding all three of those colors of splatter into my background and all over my butterfly. That green shows up really nicely. It almost looks like gold splatter in the background because it's picking up the pigment from the other colors. And so once again here's my lovely clean cleanup. Easy, easy, easy. Okay, so I just finished up this card, added a little bit of a black mat and then a blue card base. And I also shared the dragonfly card with you using a couple of these backgrounds. And so all of the supplies that I used today are listed underneath this video. There's also a link over to my blog where you can download a PDF so you get all the measurements on how to create this card, uh, along with clickable links to the products and where I purchased them from and where you can purchase them from. And thank you so much for stopping in today. I really appreciate you doing that. If you enjoyed today's video, please consider giving me a thumbs up and even sharing it with your friends. And until next time, toodles! Thank you.